Hi and welcome to this new video and in this video I'm talking about setting up Velostrone for a low specification machine. I don't want to spend too long defining what a low specification machine is but basically any machine that does not have a discrete graphics card would be considered low specification so if you're running Intel graphics so if it's got on an Intel i3, i5 or i7 in it and when you look at your graphics card it says Intel HD or Intel HD 4000, 5000, 5600, 510, 520, 530 or Intel Iris Pro any of those that is a onboard graphics chip which is built into the CPU and is low specification. This also pretty much covers all Macs. So this video is for almost all Macs. There are one or two models that would not fall into the jurisdiction of this video. There's an iMac that's got a, either an R370 or an R390 AMD card in it and that would not be covered by this video. Uh, and there is a high-end MacBook, I think, that's got an AMD 560 or something like that in it, um, which is a reasonably powerful card, and that will also not be covered by this video. But pretty much every other Mac, iMac or MacBook, falls into low specification. Additionally, any laptop which has not been identified as a gaming laptop, so it's not been designed for gaming, probably doesn't have a discrete graphics card in it, and would be counted as low specification. Also any laptop from several years ago which was a gaming laptop years ago and now can't really be considered to be one anymore may well fit into this low specification bracket. It might fit into the medium specification bracket. It depends on the graphics card and I can't really advise you on that because there are just so many. Okay let's move on. So if we go into settings, the first thing you want to do is set control system polling to normal. You don't want this on fast, you want it on normal. In screen settings, we want to set auto adjust quality to no, minimum FPS, we want to 60, quality level fastest, screen resolution should be 800 by 600, full screen yes, V-Sync true, graphics rendering forward, color grading don't worry about it, motion blur off, motion blur amount don't worry about it, high quality trees no, high quality water no, fisher camera no, camera draw distance another important one this should be low normally it's set to high set it to low to low like that, dynamic skies no, high quality football stadium no so you see the low quality football stadium in the background here, birds and butterflies no, high mouse pointer yes this is a starting point. You may well be able to run faster than this on your machine but the thing you want to do is to set it up as low as possible to begin with and fly it and understand how it should be flying first. Then when you understand how it should be flying you can start increasing these settings and when you start to notice that it's no longer flying the way it should anymore you've gone too far and you can back your settings off accordingly. Okay, I won't hit apply here because I don't want my screen to go blur blurry for the video. In quad settings, physics CPU usage should be set to medium or potentially low. Try it on medium first. If you find that your machine is still struggling, then set physics CPU usage to low. Camera field of view should be 120 or 115, 220 depending on your comfort level because you do get some distortion of the image at 120. Camera angle should be 45 to 50. If you're an inexperienced drone racer then or a noob or you consider yourself fairly new to it then you may want to reduce this down to 35 or even less but for uh, someone who's already a racer and has got some skills 45 is a good start point, 45 to 50 is around about right for most racing tracks. Propeller power leave at 100, min throttle 1030, quad weight 100%. Then we get into these settings here. Camera angle compensation, if you don't know what it is, turn it off. You don't want that on, it will screw things up. If you do normally fly with camera angle compensation in beta flight, then by all means turn it on. But this is an early implementation from beta flight 301. It's not as good as the camera compensation you currently have in beta flight 3.2. Quad rear spotlight should be false, low detail quads true, 
collision you can set to whatever you want there's no performance impact for it trails enabled should be set to false because that will cause a impact in multiplayer you can turn it back on if you discover that your machine is running okay and just see how you get on battery simulation up to you how you set that there's no performance impact from running battery simulation and then quad audio on the quad so that's all of the settings if we go into the game now you want to pick empty scene day and to begin with you want to pick a very very lightweight track so pylons um, mini rock is another potential one but basically you want as as little as possible in the scene you don't want a, a really highly detailed scene like HDR snapback for instance which has got loads of trees lots and lots and lots of assets in it you want a very very simple track for your initial flight testing because you don't want to overload your machine you want to find out how the sim should be flying first and then you can start to increase quality settings and try more complicated tracks and see you know whether your settings can be raised slightly or whether you need to stay as low as I've got them here so if we go into the scene and you hit F12 you'll get a readout of your frame rate we've got VSync on so it should be running at 60 frames per second or whatever your monitor refresh rate is set to which could be 75 you've got a 75 Hertz monitor but generally most monitors are 60 Hertz and therefore your frames per second should be 60 when you fly around the track this should not be dropping below 60 it should be pretty solid at 59 60 or 58 59 60 it should stay up there at that level if it starts to drop down at all in a simple scene like this then you need to go into quad settings and change CPU uh, physics CPU usage to low because your machine actually needs even more breathing space okay you'll notice that we are running in fastest so you've got some blurry rocks here billboard trees in the background and only when things get closer to you and trees get closer to you do they become 3d that's due to the fastest setting that you set if you find that you know you fly around and it feels good you can try upping your quality level by pressing the E key and you can see here I've just pressed E to go to fast it's doubled the texture quality so you can see this all looks really quite nice now and some of these billboard trees these two are still billboards but these ones have, over here have become 3D and if you press E again we've got to simple quality level you can see my frame rate is still at 6D and now all these trees are 3D so you can play around with this and get an understanding of what your machine is capable of but you want to fly it initially on fastest to get a feel so you know how it should feel one thing I should highlight is that if you've changed your quality, hang on, let me just turn this off, let me turn off that, go back in here. If you've changed your physics CPU usage to medium, then it's very likely you'll get some P gain wobble in flight and you may need to drop these down by five or so in order to get rid of that wobble because when you set your physics to medium, what you're effectively doing is reducing the PID loop rate of your flight controller and therefore these rates here the default rates were set up for high CPU usage for physics now you've dropped to medium they may be too high on the P gain so you may have to back them off if you go down to low physics CPU usage then you may have to back them off a little bit more okay um, that's pretty much it the idea now would be to fly around, get a feel for it, understand how the simulation works and flies, and then you want to go to a heavier quality scene with more stuff in it and just see how your machine behaves. You, you're trying to work out what scenes you can run and which scenes you can't. River 2 is the highest quality, highest loading scene in Velocidrone. So if you load that one and you discover that you can't get a nice solid 60 frames per second and things start to feel like you're flying through treacle or your fall rates suddenly start to feel like they're a bit slow and the quad feels like it's drifting or floating too much then you're probably overloading your machine and you can't run that scene. This is fairly common River 2 is quite a complex scene. It's not particularly aimed at these low specification machines. However, when we tested it on a lot of the Intel HD 
chips you can run River 2 at these low quality settings. As I say you're currently should be running at 800 by 600 you may find on some machines particularly Windows you may be able to step up to 1280 by 720 for Macs for the most part they run best at 800 by 600 okay uh, that's pretty much it from here you're really just kind of upping your quality level turning things on and seeing what effect they have but the point is that you've configured the sim to the lowest common denominator first and flown it and have got a feel for how it flies so that you know that when you start to overstep the mark with your quality settings you'll be able to notice you'll be able to feel that something has changed and things aren't quite right and you've probably pushed the spec of your machine a bit too far and you need to back off whatever you did okay that's it see you on the next video